Hello everyone, this is Rachel Cassander with Kazomba Community, here to give you an interview tonight with... Um, Bernard Baker from Hampton, Virginia. And... Marquita Bianca from Virginia Beach, Virginia. And these two are the main representatives of Hampton Roads Kizomba. <laughs> everything about it and then um, I took um, one Kisoma class but then didn't see it again for like another year and a half mm -hmm. and then by the time that I saw it I was like I love you and <laughs> I want to be with you forever and um, so then Bernard and I literally were at the same Congress together and we like completely changed our whole Congress schedule it was like the first day of college we're like hey okay so what class are you going to okay and then we're gonna go to this class together and we're all highlighting and have book bags on and it was just really crazy and so um, but that was Kisoma but I've been dancing in general um, since I was 21 10 years now do the math that's 31 years oh. old yes. it's all right. proud of it proud uh, me, I've actually been dancing for maybe around five years, and I learned this dance called Chicago Style Stepping. Oh. And I learned that first, and that opened my doors to dance, period. But then I went to bachata and then salsa, and then I went to my first Congress, which was, you know, DC. And that was where I really dove into Kizomba. I, before I went there, Lee and Kat got them from up there, came down here and gave us a little taste. Mm -hmm. And from watching the videos and seeing that taste, that was enough because that's how it starts off. It's just a little taste. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't, I haven't let go since. And I just think. So, you guys are talking on. about DC Bachata Congress in 2012, right? Yes. Right. It's so funny because I was actually there too. We may have even been in the same, in the room, same room and oh, did not know it. Crazy. Yeah. Oh, and <laughs> <laughs> so, um, now that you have started teaching here uh, in Hampton Roads, how do you explain Kizomba for people who have never experienced it before? Um, well, the best way I feel like we like to let them know that it's all about basically connection. Uh, we explain, of course, like you know, that it's from Africa and in Angola but we deal with a lot of Latin dancers so we just help to explain to them there's not a lot of side to side but it's all into the ground and it's not the videos are beautiful but we try to explain to them it's just like a long hug that you have for basically four minutes or however oh, long the song is I like that idea yeah. and we try to explain make it as simple as possible Anything to add to that? Yeah, I think what we, um, to piggyback off of that, and that's actually really what we try to focus on, but just keeping this dance as organic as possible and mm -hmm. making sure that, that everyone understands um, it's not about you and I um, having separate moments, but about us coming together to have one beautiful moment. And um, I think that that's what all of our students are enjoying so much about it. And sometimes, as time has gone on, partner dancing has strayed away and gone to other places. Um, and so we love Kisomba because it's really bringing it back to what my grandmother um, would have loved out of dancing herself. Just being with your partner, doesn't matter, close your eyes and, you know, go on a journey. Awesome. Okay, well your students are lucky to have you. Um, how do you, how do you decide 
what you're going to teach, what your approach is going to be. I mean, you mentioned that you have to keep in mind um, a Latin background that's common. What else? We rock, paper, scissors. No, all of every time. Really? <laughs> no, okay. no, no, no. <laughs> Tell me what these we, represent. Yeah. <laughs> we try to get together as far as, well, one, one thing we do is because we're, since we're so new to it, we train ourselves. Like, we, we've gotten all Sarah and Albert's DVDs. We watch the recording. We actually watch the recordings of what we record from congresses or mm -hmm. festivals we go to. And we go through them and we learn as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So gauged on the level that's in the class, we always focus on the basics. Like the basics is basically the first step to everything, connection, basics, and all of that. But based on whatever level it is, we base it on you know what we've learned that maybe that week or a couple of weeks, and we just basically go from there. Um, anything you wanted to add as far as And I that. think we also try to keep it fun too, um, mm -hmm. because we recognize everyone will come in and they'll say, okay, well, we've been doing basics for three weeks and da 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 da. So we try to have what we call a wild card. And okay. a wild card isn't like a specifically really challenging move, but it's something that will take their mindset and make them think about it a little bit different. So if I'm able to do my basic three like this, okay, well, how can I travel with that? Or how can I turn it up just to make it a little bit different? So that way when I am dancing with different people, I can challenge myself but also make sure that um, the story that's being told with the song that I'm dancing to is, is a good one. Oh, I love that. So encouraging each student's creativity yes. from the beginning. Yes. Awesome. So we don't build machines. So uh -huh. we don't do the same thing over and over again. So you've mentioned a couple of influences that you two have. How would you describe your Kizomba style? Um, and you can have separate ones, obviously, although we do dance together a lot. <laughs> uh, I would say we definitely gravitate more so towards the Parisian style. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but I feel like, personally, I'm a lot more playful. Like, I like to just, whenever the music comes on, I like to hear a song, and if I hear a certain beat or I hear a certain lyric or word, I like to just try to play along with that and not just be stuck with just the bass all the things that are going around within the song and of course definitely depending on my partner mm -hmm. uh, but yeah I definitely I feel like I'll have more of a playful style I'm still learning but that was the same one so. we're all still learning mm -hmm. that, that <laughs> yes you can take that for granted what about you Marquita? I think that it's you know I don't even know if I can really honestly answer that question at this point I, I feel like um, I've been so in the mindset of keeping myself to train and staying in a mindset of just enjoying every single moment and not necessarily focusing on what it is that I'm necessarily doing as far as like a style basis. Um, and so I think I'm just having more fun in that growth process than I am really trying to form it into something. And then I think that eventually there's going to be that one thing where I'm going to see you maybe two years from now and I'm like, Rachel, so this is the word that describes the style that I have. Okay, because so I have it now. Two years from now, two years from now, we're gonna do the, the the second series. You know, because sure. uh, on the community re-interviews. Where are they now? Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Awesome. Um, so here in Hampton Roads, Kazomba is still relatively new. What do you do to get the word out about your classes and just? get more people into the dance? We dance everywhere. Oh. <laughs> well, Bernard will dance like a random Walmart. Um, do you, is that too much information? Am I, am I not supposed to tell them that? Hi guys, Whoa. okay, yeah. So, no, but we, you know, it was so funny because when we first started dancing, we literally be the only people, it's like, we call it kind of the monkey in a cage syndrome. Um, and so we're like, we love this, but it's, you know, just everybody kind of sitting around and we're the only person in the club. And it's gone from literally being the two of us in a club to now having socials where we have 30 people dancing and loving it. And so we're so grateful for that. Um, but I think that we just kind of keep in the mindset of if there's anybody who wants to learn or know about Kisumba, we're like, okay, where's the corner? We'll tell you right now. Yeah. If you walk in and you don't know um, what Kisumba is and where to South Social, okay, well, here, you know. Like it's suspect or something. Um, and that's just how it's kind of grown. I mean, Bernard would literally have like one on ones with people and meet them at hotels. Yeah. In the lot in a nice well lit lobby <laughs> where there's lots of people watching who also now want to learn Kisomba. Um, and so like from that like he'll call me on a random Saturday, Oh, I'm going to meet so and so and so. Where at the 
Weston. Okay. Um, I'm just kidding. We're not endorsed by the Weston either. But, um, but um, so went from that, and then of course now us having like you know our own studio where we can just bring in people and literally have like a saw top or you know just a class or you know not a specific time where we have to like leave. We'll literally be in here till like 2 a.m. if we really could. Oh, that's amazing. If you didn't have to drive over yeah, the bridge. Yeah, I drive very far. Oh. Um, one thing that like my motivations to wanting to teach honestly is because there wasn't any because I'm in the area mm -hmm. so because of that I wanted to teach as many people so that I can dance with them <laughs> that's all so I so teach so that I, I can I dance think most of us teachers here in the United States had selfish motives Duh. and the selfish motive was not money right <laughs> like, it was more dance partners absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. so We're like those things or like I know somebody that wants to learn I'm like okay we'll just I'll teach you right now we'll well, like we're right here, go into the lobby real quick, show you this, and now you can go to this social here. So we just, we when she said organic, we really wanted to stay organic, but of course we use social media and things like that, but. Yeah. Okay, still. right, and so you have a Facebook page, mm -hmm. you're, you have a pretty active meetup group. Yeah. Um, we've got you on Kizoma Community. Mm -hmm. Thank um, you for that. Yeah, no, great. Um, so one more question for you both. Um, what does it mean for you to be part of the growing Kizomba community here in the United States? Oh, it's extremely humbling for me. It's like to know that you can go somewhere and you know that there's a group of people that love what you love or want to do what you do. And there's no barrier of entry because it's, mm -hmm. it's new everywhere. Right. So because it's new everywhere, everybody has that freshness like, oh man, finally, oh, like, I love doing this. Finally, somebody that loves it just as much as we do. So yeah. it feels good to be humble and be a part of this. Yeah, right, absolutely. I, I think the cool thing is is that it's completely opened up like communication. Um, and so like you can literally be in a new town, in a new city, and you can Google wherever they have Kisomba or dancing in that area. And now all of a sudden, you know, you meet somebody named Bob, and then he's like, oh, do you need a place to stay? Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, and then you're eating, and the next thing you know, like, your whole week of plans changes completely because now you're going to go dancing for the next week. So it's it's been really super cool to not only meet people from other demographics, um, but also just other places in the world um, and be able to kind of share a, you know, meaning of communication with them through this dance, you know, and with the big story. So that's kind of cool. I'm a salsa dancer by, you know, so the flashy and all of those things, kind of bringing it back down to the basics of being like just in the moment with another person means so much to me, I think specifically for that reason. Um, so it's really cool. We oh, got some really great guy dancers out there too. Hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. well said. Our lady Sue, yeah. Hello to everyone. <laughs> I know. If you haven't danced with these two, you know, make your way to Virginia Beach sometime. It's a great destination anyway. Um, but thank you both for being here and doing this with me tonight. Absolutely, thank you. And uh, I'm gonna give you some contact information for these two and their group. So you can look at the next slide as well as the information below. And don't forget that if you'd like to see more videos like this and get connected to Kizomba all over the United States, you can go to kizombacommunity.com. Thanks guys. Bye.